Well, good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to call to order this Pierce County Council meeting in Tuesday study session. It's Tuesday, August 8th, um, and the time is 12.08 p.m. I, uh, I sincerely apologize for beginning us late. Um, all members are present except for Councilmember Denson. Item number two is review of today's council meeting agenda. Ms. Long to brief the council. All right, thank you and good afternoon. This is um, an amended uh, agenda for this afternoon. We'll start with your consent agenda under B, introduction and scheduling. Um, under one, you have 2023-28, and this is relating to pet shops and regulating the sale of dogs and cats uh, and amending chapter 5.24 of the county code. Uh, this is for referral to public safety, and you'll be setting the final on this for September 12th. And then there is an addition, um, and Mr. Kruger can answer any questions you might have about this related to um, the conservation futures. I believe that's scheduled to be heard in a special meeting of CDC next week. Right. And so with your permission, we would add that for introduction and referral. And then um, final, no final at this time. Um, so we'll move now to uh, resolutions, R2023-120. Uh, this is establishing a policy and process for the display of art in council chambers and reception areas. This is for referral to rules. You'll be setting the final on this for August 29th. Uh, next is our 2023-122. Um, this is approving the Human Services Department and Behavioral Health Advisory Board's 2024-2025 uh, funding recommendations for the Behavioral Health and Therapeutic Courts Fund and Liquor Tax. This is for referral to Human Health and Human Services. You'll be setting the final on this for August 22nd. For final actions, you have three um, confirmation resolutions, R2023-119. This is uh, four new members to the Senior Center Proposal Evaluation Committee, R2023-121. Uh, this is confirming the appointment of one new member to the Pierce County Opioid Abatement Council. And finally, you have R2023-123. Um, this is confirming the removal of an existing member from the Pierce County Tourism Promotion Area Hotel Commission. And then there will be, um, I don't know if the updated agenda has been shared, but there is a motion um, to amend next week's meeting schedule. Um, and so that will be shown um, under other items with your approval. Um, moving to section seven, proclamations recognitions and awards, you do have one item here that's been added and that is proclaiming August 10th through the 13th as Pierce County Fair weekend in Pierce County. And I believe Councilmember Kruver will be reading this one. Moving to your action items under section eight ordinances, you have 2023-23. This is granting a non-exclusive franchise to the Summit Water and Supply Company for the location of water lines. Uh, this received a due pass at EIDC on July 11th. Uh, number two is 2023-26. Uh, this is affirming um, an application for open space classification. Uh, this is located uh, within the incorporated boundaries of the city of Puyallup. Um, and this is for final action. And finally, you have 2023-27. This is related to wage adjustments for non-represented employees uh, in the council office, amending the salary classification plan and repealing ordinance 2004-51. Uh, this was forwarded without recommendation at rules on uh, July 31st. Um, there was one amendment that we reviewed and dis we discussed that study session yesterday, and there will be another one from council member Morrell. Um, and uh, it's not, oh, there you are. Um, it hasn't been prepared yet, but we discussed it. And what it would do is um, remove item number two from exhibit A, which is the adjustment for the CA3 position and the IT ops position and replace it with language referring it to the human uh, resources department for um, a study and evaluation and report back to the council by December 31st of this year. And that is it for your agenda for this afternoon. Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, questions about um, our agenda today. Vice Chair Campbell. It, just on the amendment, I know we don't have it before us. We're referring it for a study back. Uh, if there are any changes from that, would we commit to making them retroactive back to uh, at least this decision point when we could have moved forward? 
Councilman Morrell, what is your intention? It's up to the council at that time. Okay, I think just out of fairness, it's been asked now, we're referring it off. If it comes back that what was proposed is something that we could or should do, it's not fair. So I think we should at least set a date of retroactivity, maybe September 1st, October, August 1st, we can think about it between now and final, but I think it's only fairness rather so it doesn't look like we're just punting for the sake of punting. Thank you. I think as long as we have an understanding, it's okay. I don't think it needs to be in writing, but I mean, we have the ability to, to do that. Is that not correct? Right, at the time you do make any changes. Um, so if the amendment passes and HR comes back to the council with a report and recommendation, um, when the council chooses to act on that, it can also decide the timing. Yeah. And the reason why I'm, I'm looking at this is uh, since the uh, class and comp study was done in 2020, there have been various uh, departments who have uh, not agreed with the classification and the salary scale and the Y rating. And the process is they've made requests of HR, uh, human resources to reevaluate those and update the comps. I think uh, Council Member Campbell, myself, and, and uh, Council Member Kruver was just at the Assessor Treasurer's uh, Employees uh, meeting, and they have followed the same process. I think they have 29 positions mm -hmm. that they've requested uh, to update them and to check the Y ratings on several of them. I just think if we sidestep the process that all the other departments have to go through, it sets up a lot of finger pointing. And so that's why I'm doing it. No other reason. It's just, I think that the council needs to understand the, what could happen if, if we just arbitrarily uh, accept our own um, comparisons, internal comparisons I think, what we are comps mm -hmm. internal comps instead of having hr come back and say yes and since then and i've had chief of staff uh um miss murray to check into kind of what has changed in in the comps out there and one of the like ones is is snohomish county who if you remember in the 2020 study they were below Pierce County um, in their, they call them LAs, um, up there. Um, and then King County is just given a budget. So um, Chief of Staff Murray put together some comparables. And since then, uh, Snohomish County has gone back and reevaluated the LA's positions and actually added um both levels and uh salary levels so i i think it, it, this process should go pretty quickly uh because there are actual comps out there now that are more in line than 2020 but there again it's hr coming to the council and saying these are the comps and the classifications and we feel that they're in line and then we make a decision based on that and not an internal decision. So that's why I'm bringing it forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Morrell. Vice Chair Kimball. Thank, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Council Member Morrell for that explanation. Uh, again, I'll just kind of, and I, I don't think we need an amendment to your amendment, but just reinforce that if we, um, have a finding from HR that we should be at X that I would request that we look at some form of retroactivity uh, to some date around now when we could have because if uh, and I'll request at that time and we can discuss at that time if your amendment passes and we send it to HR and it comes back and there's change we can have that discussion but that would be my intent uh, just to preserve that in the conversation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Any other questions about today's council meeting agenda? 
Not seeing any. Um, that brings us to item three, external boards and commissions. Mr. Swanson, are you willing to begin us if there's uh, any Puget Sound Regional Council or Pierce County Regional Council items? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, both both organizations are on their summer hiatus and there are no, uh, no uh, meetings for August. Appreciate that. Do other members have uh, reports of external boards and commissions they represent Pierce County? Councilmember Hitchin. Thank you, Chair. Um, I had the opportunity to join Bertha 25 yesterday and they just wanted to extend a thank you for the letter and guidance and appreciated having it in writing and ahead of time. So um, just wanted to extend thanks. So thank you to the council for doing that and the staff that helped support that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to all the council members who um, contributed thoughts. Uh, on that. Customer Herrera. Thank you, Chair. Uh, earlier, uh, I got to go to the ramp meeting um, where they discussed uh, several infrastructure stuff that's going on in the port. And then the um, they also announced that the West Rock is going to be closing down um, their company in Port of Tacoma, um, I think within eight weeks, pretty quickly. So, and that's 400 jobs or so leaving uh, the port there. So, um, We'll see how that affects everybody, um, stuff like that. So, Major. Thank you. Vice Chair Campbell. Did they opinion or discuss on perhaps what the impacts they might see of that closure? Well, on West Rock Mills? Yes. Uh, no, they just made the announcement of, that they were closing down, which was new to a lot of people's ears there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I mentioned last time uh, the South Sound Housing Affordability Partners uh, Executive Board met last Friday. The main topic of discussion was getting um, an update on the investment strategy that the Human Services Department is putting together for the Marine Howard Affordable Housing Act dollars. Uh, it was a great venue to get feedback from the cities and towns who participate in the South Sound Housing Affordability Partners. Um, I think staff is taking that feedback uh, very seriously. There's, like I said, very good feedback, I thought. Um, and uh, <coughs> the human services staff um, is going to the advisory board of SHAPE, another really great group of thinkers there um, for their advice on the investment strategy. And they, they have a whole outreach plan um, over the next uh, eight weeks or so um, and remind us that they're due to come back to council with a, um, a recommendation on an investment strategy by December 1st. So they seem to be on pace and doing some significant stakeholder work uh, to do so. It was a good conversation. Councilman Morrell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All on that subject line um, has, it's been a point of, uh, of conversation for probably about four <laughs> years now about uh, available land that county and cities have. Have we used up <clears throat> that supply of land out there? So now we have to purchase land on the open market to put these affordable housing projects together. You. You're talking about government, current government owned surplus land. Um, I have, I, I don't know. Um, I, I guess my, it, when I hear that, um, you, I think you know uh, really well that, you know, that a lot of these projects aren't necessarily happening on government surplus land. Sometimes they do, but oftentimes they don't. They're buying property, redeveloping property on the open market, like almost any other developer. Um, so I, I think that's that's my first um, reflection in hearing that. Uh, I think um, last time I've seen a report about a bit of, of government owned land that is surplus to the needs of government has been a few years since there's been a, a, an update to that kind of analysis. Um, one of the many things we've asked the Community Development Corporation here at Pierce County to do is, if you, you, you probably recall, is we asked them, 
what would it take for our community development corporation to take a more active role in analyzing county owned surplus land for um, redevelopment, especially for affordable housing purposes. And the community development corporation reported back to the health and human services committee about six, six weeks or so um, with a proposal about what that what more humans resources they they would need in order to take on that more robust role. So that's something for council to react to, I think, in the in our budget deliberations, if we want the community development corporation to take on that more active role. Okay. And then the other question I I have of the group is have have they looked at the cities? Do the cities have all the same tools in their toolbox that Tacoma has? I, I guess what I'm, I'm, I'm alluding to like the multifamily tax exemption. Do, do all the qualified cities in Pierce County have that? My understanding is no. So not all the cities take advantage of a multifamily tax exemption program. Not all of this uh, eligible cities um, use the maximum thresholds for SEPA exemption, um, for SEPA infill or, or redevelopment. Uh, and that is one of the things that SHAPE is doing is putting together a toolkit um, to make it as easy as possible for a city or town who is eligible under state law to take that tool and implement it if they so desire. But the short answer is no. And in order to incentivize cities to take advantage of, of the tools, SHAPE is um, creating a toolkit to, for there to be some plug and play in, in terms of the ordinances and you know, what analysis you need to do in order to um, have an MFTE program, for example. So that, that is one of the member benefits of SHAPE. Okay, because you know, I, I would like to be able to have that discussion with if any of my cities do not take full, uh, full use of the tools in front of them uh, that they have available and be able to have that discussion with the councils and see if we can start making them take steps to do that. Um, maybe not the whole package, but especially the multifamily tax exemption, um, whether it be market rate or affordable or a blend of the two. So. Anyway, I just would like to see if they have that information available. Thank you. I'll ask Mr. Gauthier, um, the shape manager, um, if he has a list. We've um, hesitated shaming which communities have certain tools online and which don't. Um, we, there is an active project to show visually on the shape website where affordable housing projects are being built and the absence of such both will tell you something as much as the presence of something will tell you something. So um, that's been the strategy to date is to visually show where, and we know, you know it's not gonna be perfect and we have as much access to information as, as, they, as they can, um, especially where projects have been, uh, where there's been um, a housing tax credit project or a housing trust fund funded project the projects that they they know of they don't they don't uh, they don't dig into every market rate project as you well know they don't have the capacity to understand the pro forma and restrictions of every single building project throughout the county but I'll follow up with Mr. Gauthier. Thank you I appreciate it. Any other external boards and commissions reports? Not seeing any um, under chair's topics today, there's nothing um, for me to report. And so we'll move to other business and see what other business council members might have. Don't see any. Uh, Ms. Long, any other business for council today? Not today, thank you. Seeing no other business for the council in Tuesday's study session, we are adjourned.